right. Um, thanks for coming during the, uh, the coffee break. I uh, appreciate that. Uh, <clears throat> so, my name is Vincent Mayers. Um, I'm a, a Java champion and open source um, uh, project steering committee member, a jug leader, and a, and a conference organizer. But I am not a software engineer. I just play one on TV. And uh, why I say that will become apparent later. This talk, uh, the title of this talk, Three Cups of Java, comes from this book, um, Three Cups of Tea, by Greg Mortensen and David Rellin. Um, so Greg was a climber, a, a mountaineer, and he was climbing on K2 in the Himalayas, and he fell, he was injured, uh, and he ended up being nursed back to health by um, this small village in, in the, in the, near K2. And uh, <clears throat> he was there for some time, and he was so impressed by their hospitality and he saw some children scratching in the dirt, okay, outside of one of the houses. And he said, "What are they playing?" And they said, "No, no, this is their school. This is where they learn. They're doing their lessons in the dirt." And he was so impacted by this, he decided to start a, a nonprofit to build schools for children in the region. And then, but first, he realized he had to build a bridge over the river to get the materials for the schools. And, and this uh, spawned a whole nonprofit enterprise. Now. The backstory, or Greg's, uh, Greg's been a little bit discredited. He, you know, defrauded donors and things like that. But the sentiment of this remains the same. And in Pashtun, in Balti culture, in the Pashtun region, there's a saying that the first time you share tea with someone, you're a stranger. The second time you take tea, you're not a guest. And the third time you take tea, you're family. Now this has bearing with your to all our lives, actually, you'll, you'll see soon. <clears throat> all right, let's talk about the importance of the number three. All right, um, in mythology, in Norse mythology, uh, you had Niflheim, Nosfellheim, and Gnungagap. And if anyone can pronounce that better than me, please keep it to yourself. Okay, best I can do. In literature, there were three elven rings. In science, uh, three nucleotide nucleoids determine the genetic uh, code of everything. Okay. OK, I get it. Three is important. But what on earth has this got to do with community? All right, so let's take a, a quick uh, uh, look at the history of communities. OK, so in primitive times, around 10,000 BC, the three primary drivers of people were a shelter, food, and security. People gathered for that reason. Uh, around the classical area, around the Roman times, uh, you saw the rise of democracy. Um, you saw the concept of civic duty and, 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 and uh, and also the rise of city-states. In the early modern period, around the Industrial Revolution, you saw the rise of nation-states due to increases in uh, transportation technology. People could uh, get around the world uh, due to bigger ships. Um, colonialism led to colonialism, and that led to increased industry. Okay, three main drivers. Modern times, around 1900, you saw again increases in transportation technology lead to the rise of suburbia, because then people did not need to live where they worked. They could travel. Uh, and then also saw an increase in diversity, okay, as people came in from other countries to, to regions where they weren't before because they could get there. In our online world now, the three main drivers we have are kind of shared interests, communication, and, and the rules and norms that come with that. All right? Um, let's take a look at this rules and norms. And, and for us, it's important that we, uh, we're inclusive, that everything we do is accessible. Uh, to lots of types of people, and that we adhere to things like codes of conduct. Okay, and, and Jay Focus here has one. But let's take a, a, a quick aside here. There is a who remembers Peter Gabriel? All right, you guys are all making me feel really old. Thank you. So there's this album, very imaginatively called Peter Gabriel Plays Live. All right, and there's a song on there called Not One of Us, and this illustrates his point aptly, I think. And in introducing this song, Peter says, this is a song about groups of people that make themselves into smaller groups in order to feel strong and but excluding others. So if you look at this nice multi-colored, multi-abled, multi-gendered um, image, when you try and be inclusive, you can become selectively exclusive. Okay? It's something that we all need to watch for in our community interactions All right, uh, these days. Now, Gartner, has, <laughs> I prepared this slide last year, but now we're in 2024, right? By 2024, 24% of meetings, only 24% of meetings will be in person, okay? Uh, and that employees value or, or seek value and purpose 
more than anything else in their workplace. All right? Human interaction is vital in everything we do. It leads, it leads to cognitive function, to increased physical health, and to, to longevity. And if our employers do not seek this out, or provide this for us, we have to seek it out for ourselves. Okay? So in the context of us all being here with a common shared interest of, of technology, how do we do this? Okay? Or as technologists, how do we do this? To my mind, there are three main ways. There are conferences, where we're at, there are tech groups, and, and then there's your teams. Okay? When you go to a conference, <coughs> your three main objectives are learning, to learn, to be social, and, and to gain motivation. So being here should give you a singular focus. Right? Who, who's checked their work email this week while they're here? Come on. I know it's more people than that. All right? OK, don't do it. <laughs> Try not to, anyway. Um, being out of your environment should allow you to focus on where you're at, learning new skills and getting new insights. Okay? The networking aspect, the collaboration and the relationships that you build here are vital. In fact, uh, who's familiar with the, the hallway track? Anybody? For those that aren't, the hallway track is the conversations you have between the sessions. Okay? Um, over coffee, <coughs> over lunch with someone that you've just met, and you're just chatting away, and your real-world use case that you're working on may come up in conversation. And this person you're talking to may or may not have solved this, okay? but they could have a perspective on it, which changes the way that you think about this thing. And that, in and of itself, is more valuable than any of the sessions you could go to at the event. Just let that sink in for a minute. All right? And then the motivation. There is a uh, artists gather in communes. I don't know if you're familiar with this concept. And the reason they do that is because they, they feed off each other's creativity and passion in creating these artworks. And it's the same for us here when we geek out on stuff. Okay? It gives us increased motivation uh, in, our, in our day jobs, brings back the joy. Tech groups. Meetup.com, um, there are over 1,300 Java-related groups on Meetup.com. Okay? I include a whole bunch of cloud-native stuff here. In, a, in a, you know, almost 500 cities in, in, in 80 plus countries in the world. <coughs> Java user groups, JUGS, there are 230, over 230 listed JUGS okay, in, in over 200 cities in over 60 countries. These are all things that you can go to for free. All right? Hackathons, Who, who's been to a hackathon? Anybody? Uh, if you haven't, I encourage you to do so. This one is in my hometown of Atlanta, USA. But you could probably tell I'm not from Atlanta. Well, I am now, but I'm not originally. <clears throat> anyway, I live in Atlanta. 48 and 48 uh, is a hackathon that aims to build 48 websites for 48 nonprofits in 48 hours. And people of all abilities gather at a venue. They bring in beds and food and everything else, and they knock out these websites. Uh, admittedly, a lot of them are templatized, but you've got product people, developers, web developers, designers, all working together. And a really good thing about a hackathon is it doesn't really matter if the, the thing they're working on matches your core skill set, you're all engineers. You can figure it out. You can add value. You can learn new things. You can give others new perspective just by attending. And then there's your team. Okay. So in this world now where, uh, like, who, who's fully back in the office? Anybody? All right. Um, who is hybrid? And then everyone else is remote, I gather. <clears throat> a little more challenging in today's work environment, but you can do off-site events with, your, with teammates. If, if you work for a larger company, for example, there could be somebody else in your town that works for your company. You know, they might not be working in engineering. That's OK. Invite them to lunch. Okay? They're, they're facing the same challenges you are, and you both work, you're all with the same company. Take them to drinks. If you are going back to the office a little bit, try and arrange a lunch and learn. Bring in a local speaker from a local user group. Uh, bring in an expert or a vendor. As much as you know, you think you know what you know about the tools you're using, you're not going to know as much as the, as the people that, not the sales people, but the, the sales engineers that are involved in that company that, that produces this thing. Bring them in. But most importantly, none of this happens unless you take personal responsibility for this. Okay? can't wait for your boss to say, go do this, go do that. You have to do it yourselves. All right? There will be no benefits to any of this without consistency. All right? 
software engineers understand eventual consistency, okay? An update will eventually be blah, blah, eventual consistency, okay? And I mean, there's some nice pictures of this, like, you know, well, they're actually boring. You know, database here, node that, whatever. That's a really boring picture. I like this one better. I have to turn around and read it, because <coughs> we'll have to go over here, actually. Uh, I know it's hard to uh, it's focus right now, but we should try and finish testing the database. Uh, OK. The system needs to guarantee eventual consistency. Yeah, I mean, it does. Eventual consistency is guaranteed by the second law of thermodynamics. Sooner or later, this will all be a uniform heat bath, maximum entropy. Maximum entropy means no useful work will be done. I'm getting a head start on that right now. Now, my problem with these two images are, will eventually, and sooner or later, OK? We have to have intentional consistency in anything that we do in order to achieve meaningful results, and especially as it pertains to our involvement in communities, because for the most part, that involvement is, uh, is voluntary, OK? <clears throat> and it's really, really hard. Now, in athletics, OK, it's, it's a given to, to get the technique, the conditioning, and the mental uh, you know, strength to do this. You, you have to be very focused. Uh, with work, I, I just want to share this example. Quarkus came out in 2019, I believe, right? And, and this was a, a Java user group meeting in Atlanta where Burr Sutter from Red Hat presented on Quarkus. And some months later, I met a lady at a, the next user group, or a few months later, and she said that uh, we were chatting, she said she changed jobs. And she shared that she was at her interview, uh, interviewing for the job, and the interviewer asked her if she knew anything about Quarkus. And she said, no, I've never used it. You know, it wasn't part of the required stack for the job. But she said, I went to a, a Java user group meeting some months ago, and this gentleman from Red Hat was talking about Caucus. It speeds up Java, it does this, it does that. And she shared that she got the job because of that comment. She had a perspective because she was intentional about her involvement in, in her community. You never know when this is going to happen, which is why this intentionality is important. And then with children, okay, it, the, you know, with support and boundaries and ha habits, well, the support is given, but creating the boundaries and habits with children, who has children? Who has young children? <laughs> Hard, right? <laughs> okay. Um, again, remember this guy? I'm not a software engineer, but I pay well on TV. I've got a degree in pottery. I went to art school for four years, okay? But to illustrate my points, I was this athlete. This is me at the 1993 World Championships. I was a kayaker. I understand what it, take, you know, what it means to be that invested in, in preparing for these things. Um, <clears throat> I was a tech recruiter. Okay? I started to sponsor the Java user group in my town some, many years ago, and then was invited to join the board, and then invited to run the conference that we run in Atlanta, DevNexus got me to meet other people like Mateus here in, in JFocus when I came to visit and to see how he did his things. Well, all this led to me being involved in this amazing community and being invited to be a Java champion and, and, and being on the steering committee of an open source project because I was intentional about it, okay? <clears throat> and then these are my kids, so I can attest to how hard it is, okay, to, be, <laughs> to give them the boundaries and force the habits that are going to grow them into reasonable human beings. But what? Has any of this got to do with cuts of tea? All right? <clears throat> Let's look at this again. The first time you share a tea, you're a stranger. The second time you take a tea, you're not a guest. And the third time you, you have a cup of tea, you're a family. All right? I want to share the bakery scenario. OK? This is a very well accepted technical thing, the bakery scenario. Um, some years ago, I was in New York City traveling and uh, <clears throat> was staying in a, a youth hostel, and there was a bakery underneath. We had no money. So we went into the bakery in the morning. Hello. Look, I, I got some cat pictures in, OK? Give me some credit for the cat pictures, please. We went into the bakery, and we got our cup of coffee, cup of tea, whatever. Hello, here's your cup of tea. The second morning, oh, welcome back. Nice to see you. Glad to see you. The third morning, oh, my friend, how are you? Come in, we made some fresh baklava. Please join us, we welcome you. Think about this in, in the context of your lives. When you meet people 
in an environment where you're all passionate about something, whether it's like here at an event or chess club or a book club or running, whatever it is, <coughs> the interactions usually go this way. First time, you, a high, a handshake, and a hug. Okay, this is how the relationship usually evolves. When you meet someone that you connect with because you have shared goals and interests. Some takeaways, okay? Again, none of this happens by accident, right? It has to start with you. No one's doing this for you. <clears throat> Be intentional. This is Hannes Einer. He's a German kayaker, okay? This is training in the winter in Augsburg, Germany. You can see the ice, okay? This leads to Hannes being an Olympic gold medalist and world champion. Be intentional, okay? And then remember the joy. All right, we all got into this for a reason. There was some passion there. You know, maybe, hello world, right? Coding a button, <laughs> I don't know. Remember the joy, it's what will fuel all of this, okay? So, three cups of tea or something else? Please connect, thank you very much. I'm terrible at Twitter, by the way. Um, but LinkedIn and email, you can, guide, you can all reach me all the time. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have about this. Thank you.